Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to explain why Bitcoin went past its $30,000 level, really kind of blew past it. And um, it's all to do with liquidity and value. Just because something is at a high doesn't mean that something is expensive. And just because something is at a low doesn't mean it's a bargain or, you know, a cheap price. And um, liquidity is one of the main um, uh, drivers of price, whether you know you know it or not. It's fundamentals, risk, sentiment, and liquidity are the three main things that drive price. Um, and before we get into understanding the liquidity side of things, the first thing we must understand is value. Value is not price and price is not value. It's very hard to determine the, the true value of something, the intrinsic value of something based on its price and looking at a price chart. And really what smart traders do, what, um, you know, um, um, well, retail traders don't tend to do this. Uh, uh, institutional traders do is they determine current and future value, whether something is expensive at a fair value or bargain prices or, uh, or a bargain by understanding the fundamentals behind the asset that they are attempting to buy or even sell but we're focusing on buying at the moment so stop fundamental analysis that some of the things are you know that traders will look at fundamental traders will look at to determine values revenues earnings, return on equity, etc. Currency fundamentals are driven by central bank monetary policies, government fiscal policies, and which is based on really GDP and the business cycle. So whether we're in a recession or whether where we're in the boom phase, um, and that is driven by inflation and interest rates. Commodity fundamentals are driven by supply and demand macroeconomic factors, um, and that is usually driven by things like you know risk on or risk off sentiment or even scarcity, and in the case that we're talking about with Bitcoin fundamental um, analysis, the narrative around uh, Bitcoin and why uh, traders and investors are getting into Bitcoin is that it is a hedge against inflation and is a store of value. So understanding that and understanding why you should be buying something based off fundamentals and not price yeah then you can understand where potentially um uh, i guess uh, at all-time highs why something may not be considered expensive at an all-time high so um what is liquidity so you hear this word uh, uh Bounded around recently, especially you know in the last year or so online, it's all about liquidity, 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 da 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 da. So liquidity, you know, defined um, according to Investopedia, is it refers to the ease at which an asset or security can be converted into ready cash without affecting its market price. What that actually means on a price chart is um, the amount of buy or sell orders that there are in the, uh, at any you know price point so for as an example of this if you have um a, a, a large institution that wants to buy um you know bitcoin you have to and they, let's say for example they want to place a, a million uh, dollar a million pound order um, which is basically broken up into maybe smaller orders what is known as iceberg orders you can research that um but there needs to be enough if they want to buy, there needs to be enough sell liquidity. There needs to be enough sell orders at a certain price point for them to facilitate the buying that they want to do. Yeah. And if there's not enough liquidity for them to buy, yeah, if there's not enough sell orders, if there's not enough um, uh, uh, retail looking to sell so that they can buy, then the market will look for wherever the liquidity is is now at all time highs or obvious levels of support and resistance there's lots of liquidity lots of liquidity going on right so we have new traders <clears throat> who are looking at obvious levels um for example the obvious level was 30k why was in the, why was it an obvious level and it's really because you had um the media were talking about this 30,000 
dollar level right so 30k in fortune in you know this is money bitcoin on track for its longest monthly winning streak in more than a year as price edges closer to thirty thousand dollars bitcoin could hit thirty thousand dollars in 2021 so thirty thousand dollars was a level that pretty much lots of traders and investors were looking at now at any um, all-time high or obvious price point or all-time low or any kind of key level yeah there's lots and lots and lots of liquidity from two main traders there'd be new traders looking to enter into new trades and also profit takers so the smart money for example yeah if you bought down here <clears throat> at 20k yeah um, I should say if you bought down here right you were a new trader down here and where are you likely to potentially take profit if the media are saying that it could possibly get to 30k you're going to have a 30k profit target right you're not going to want this price to kind of reverse um before it gets to uh um 30k or just there or thereabouts right so there's profit takers and if you've bought down here if you buy yep yeah, if you buy your take profit is a sell yeah that's your take profit order is a sell order yeah let me just actually let me put sell order here yeah so you've got buy orders and you've got a sell order so profit takers are taking profit here sell orders in and around here you've got also new traders right so smart money would have been buying down here maybe taking some profit here potentially potentially not but at this 30k level yeah you've got new traders now new traders retail tend to generally want to short into a <clears throat> what is known as a trending market and again this is the lack of understanding potential value just because something is at an all-time high or at a major high um, doesn't mean that that's where you should be shorting yeah because really understanding supply and demand and liquidity is understanding where there is going to be more supply or more demand in that area and if there's more demand in that area than supply then prices will rise and if there's more supply than demand then prices will fall but you will never know at levels yeah or you don't really have an idea yeah why you should be buying or selling unless you understand the overall long-term value of what you are looking to buy yeah so there are new traders who are looking to do what short at 30k and that adds more sell orders yeah so they're trying to you know time the market time the highs and get short but when you have um, lots of sell orders which is basically what we know as liquidity yeah and retail is selling who is on the other side of the buying who is on the other side of the buying it has to be institutional right Trading generally is a zero-sum game. For someone to win, someone else has to lose. There is always someone or another entity on the other side of your uh, buy or sell order, right? So when you place a buy trade on your broker, your broker is forced to sell to you at that price. And when you sell, your, your broker is forced to buy back at that particular price if you're in, in a profit. So 30K was a psychological level. It was a level with a lot of liquidity. Now, if retail generally are looking to sell and retail generally don't understand value, yeah, then what was going to potentially, what was likely to happen? Who was taking the other side of these sell orders and who was doing a lot of buying at this area? You guessed it it was retail and smart money hence the reason why you had prices keep going higher because that provides retail provide the liquidity or they can provide the liquidity for the institutions to look to 
buy and they push prices higher yeah because they understand potential value and what they're buying and they're buying for the long term does that mean that price is going to continue to go higher who knows nobody knows but if the institutions are buying in and around certain key areas and prices continue to go higher of course there's going to be pullbacks prices might even come back and go below that area right which is what is known as a potential stop hunt but if they are right about future values so for example they have you know a year two years five year forecast 10 year forecast for example then buying at 30k yeah is going to be uh, advantageous if they think that for example bitcoin in the next year may reach 100k 200k they're not worried about certain price points and one thing for sure they are definitely not shorting yeah at certain areas um, just because of a technical pattern yeah um, so liquidity at highs and lows um, are um, uh, there's lots of liquidity at all-time highs and all-time lows because there's a lot of eyeballs on it yeah so smart money will do what they do and buy into liquidity hence the reason why you have prices going again higher so that they have enough liquidity to buy at these areas also as well you're going to have traders being stopped out so they put their stop loss right if you if if uh, if traders are getting short here for example this is a sell order yeah their stop loss is also a buy order and that as their stop losses get triggered that also creates more demand and more buying yeah so everybody's stop losses was up here being triggered by price and that creates demand yeah this is what is known as uh, as, as stop hunting but it's all about understanding value and i had a video on this um on my youtube channel talking about um same thing exact same thing happened with uh, gold for example right and if we go to a gold uh, price chart right we were talking about this back in August, July, August, and there was a psychological level of, of I think it was 1920, right? And in the video, I speak about, just before that happened, why the exact same principles and why gold eventually went above that, yeah? Now, one of the things you wanna do is if you're time, trying to time a reversal is wait for proof of you know value and what i mean by that is wait for the market to prove that a price point is expensive rather than just looking for um uh, a reversal at a key level so wait for the price to actually move to the downside not just move to the downside like this yeah really prove that this is an expensive area like what's happened with gold in the in uh, earlier this year this price point here 2075 is seen as a recent expensive area and you've seen something like this now again fundamentally if you want to be a buyer of gold then you're not looking at this area of this all-time high right you're not looking at it what you're looking for is actual pullbacks but let's say for example prices come up to here and then the fundamentals of gold change i can't see it happening um anytime soon with all the money printing that's going on and uh, inflation potentially into 2021 uh, and beyond but when you have um uh, uh, prices do get up here and if the fundamentals have changed for gold, then that is where you may potentially want to get short, yeah? Bitcoin, let's go back to the all-time high from 2017. Let me go through this again. Same exact thing happened. So we had an all-time high of nearly 20,000, and you can go back through the uh, the media, uh, go back through Google, and 20,000 was being spoken as um, as the uh, price at which you know um, uh, psychological level will will Bitcoin you know go past the twenty thousand level. And what happened was is again the same principles. You had traders, right? So you had new traders 
getting short at this 20,000 level, especially when seduced by price action, not understanding Bitcoin's maybe true value as being a safe haven. What was happening? You had um, profit takers as well, right? All looking to do what? And all in seducing uh, or, or, or the liquidity was sell orders, right? Profit takers who were buying from maybe, you know, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500 are looking to take profit at a psychological level. That's selling. New traders getting short. That's selling. Not understanding that they were providing the liquidity, yeah, for the institutions and smart money and, you know, fundamental traders who understood fundamental investors who understood where the value of Bitcoin may want to go. So they provided the liquidity, right? So when they were selling, who was doing the buying at 20K? Smart money. And you can see what pretty much happened. And the same situation happened at 30K. So again, just understanding all time highs um, isn't enough to just want to sell a market. The key to this is looking to know why fundamentally you're, you want to be a buyer of that asset. And then the simple thing to do is to just wait for pullbacks into demand zones, right? And that's what we look to do. Shorting at all time highs is really, um, really a fool's game if you don't understand the fundamentals and you're just looking at price. Anyways, guys, um, I hope that helps. And uh, next time Bitcoin does reach an all time high or, you know, the next uh, 50K level or 40K level that is being touted, don't just, you know, want to or look to uh, to. To, to short that area, whether it's on gold, whether it's on you know Tesla, same thing was done on Tesla as we know. There were so many traders looking to short, and look what happened. Um, you can see the same thing on you know the uh, the um, uh, stocks stock indices, the S and P five hundred, for example. This year, you know prices have made new highs. So understand why fundamentally you want to be a buyer. If prices get to all time highs and the fundamentals have changed, yeah then maybe consider shorting. But if you don't understand the fundamentals, then I would probably just stick to understanding, uh, you know, a different strategy, a technical strategy, whatever it is. If you don't understand fundamentals, I think you should basically get to learn fundamentals as um, you're really kind of trading blind. Anyways, guys, hope that helps and uh, all the best.